Yo, how's it going? We back, we back at it. Oh, I ain't got no music. There we go. So uh, hopefully, re hopefully everyone's doing good. Um, I am. Uh, Who's this guy? Somebody just followed me. It's so strange. Uh. Anyway, uh, we back at it. Hopefully y'all doing good. We uh. We out here chilling, doing what we do, and uh, getting back into it. I do apologize for being late. I had to uh, go pick up groceries, and the line to get groceries was absolutely insane. Uh, I am amazed at how many people were out and about. Yes, this overlay does look familiar, don't it? <laughs> Yeah, um, there's a lot of people actually arguing, fighting over toilet paper at the uh, local Safeway, so I thought that was pretty strange. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand uh, logic of people right now. I think it's very peculiar. But anyway, uh, what's up, random H O load Devil Hunter Nero Spirit Shock Zero? How's it going? Oh, um, it should show up now. It's uh, stream elements is a little delayed, but uh, yeah, random. If you ever wanted to join our Discord group, dude, links in the description. But uh, yeah, this 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 layout does look familiar, doesn't it? With uh, you know, folks copycatting it, which I find interesting. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and get on into it. So we played through Unica's and Hugo's story. We're going to go through it with Toll. And I've got some good good right now. Some Mike's Harder Black Cherry to help. He said, yes, yeah, fighting for the TP for the bunk hole, right? They're acting absolutely, absolutely insane. So this is the true, true story for E's Origins. So what's everybody up to so far? Still playing Final Fantasy 7. Nero says he just got off work. Random says enjoying some old tales of the abyss for fun. That's a. I want to run through that again. So I ran through Tales of the Abyss on 3DS. And uh, I reran it through it on PS2. And I was in love with it and I tried to get into. Um, Tales of, uh, what is it? Tales of Legendia. And I just can't get into Legendia. So now I must do some recording. I heard you guys. I always love CCs, but now. After hearing your grocery store, sorry, I'm glad I live in a small town. Yeah, like it was just interesting. Like, yeah, people literally fighting over toilet paper, and I'm over here like, this should have been a quick run. That took me an hour. It is insane. Is it soon to be the number one podcast in Hawaii? Come and try. <laughs> Good luck. The Legendia is uh, an odder, odd older tales. It is. It's weird. Let's 
It is bad even in small towns if they are the big chain stores. going up and down the aisles here like everything was in stock except toilet paper which is crazy oh and soda those other things It's crazy how you have to play this game three times to get the true path and canonical story. So from a small town myself and my parents are upset because they closed the local store for food and such, but the giant eagle next town over is allowed open. That's crazy. The package of meats are still bad, but I have a local store that I can go to for it. Ugh. Time for more grinding simulator. I hope it's not bad with Toll. Unica kind of made me not want to play the game anymore, but Hugo, Hugo Savagery was on point. toilet paper we got paper and plastic where and we got bleach and coffee's always stocked on our shelves but no biscuits what is with the biscuit thing why are people buying up all the biscuits where you are They're just as confused. <laughs> he said it was disgusting. Germex is hard to find too? And mass? What's up, Nero Altus? I love this intro song.
I suppose in American sense of the word, it sounds to us like, ugh, cookies and gravy. That, yeah, that sounds disgusting. No, random, you're right, they did. They played it, um, they played that perfectly. And it's one of the things where you think about almost everything that we have is run or comes from China. It's scary. So what's up, Max? I finally call, got all caught up with the John Bentley podcast. What a cool dude. Yeah, man, he's dope. <laughs> song from a Falcon game uh, Sunshine Coastline it always gets me going so I hope the amount of grinding doesn't take its toll <laughs> and that's why you don't rely on just one market for everything because at one point they will have you by the balls no it's very true um, but you have a lot of people that don't understand how markets work and it's kind of interesting because you see a lot of people um, commenting, commenting on how everything is going now. And it's, it's just interesting to me. I know I was talking to some of you guys about how, like, there are people who wanted um, this completely separate, but kind of related. But you have a lot of people who uh, wanted the stuff that Andrew Yang and, and uh, Bernie Sanders are offering with the. Uh, guaranteed you know to basically give us income So, you know, people wanted that thousand dollars universal basic income every month. And now we're getting, you know, basically that. And people are upset and feeling like, you know, I saw some people like, you know, gothics and others that were whining about it on, on Twitter, about how 1200 is no enough every month. And I'm like, at least something is going on. It's just interesting how people are being right now. It's like you can never please anybody. He said money only has value so we can trade it for goods. If people are not making goods, the money is valueless. Exactly. Yeah, um, and I even talked to Gothics about that. I'm like, why are you bitching about people only getting 1200 a month when people weren't getting anything? And she's like, well, people should get 2400 or, or 3000 every month. I'm like, okay, so who's paying for that? You know, and it's, it's always, not to throw shade at Gothics, but 
I always tend to see the uneducated people. When I say uneducated, they're uneducated on how things work. And they think everything is free. And it's like, there's a cost to everything. Like everything being made in China screws us up when situations like this happens. And they have a monopoly on all of our goods, which is why I'm glad, you know, some things are coming back to the to U.S. Uh, such as, you know, car manufacturers and stuff like that. We don't need everything outsourced to other countries. This is a parachute, not a plane. Yeah. They just don't know that cannot. No, and you have a lot of people that don't understand anything about micro, mac, or micro or micro, macro or microeconomics. Uh, they don't understand how anything at all works. Yeah, agreed. If we get our medical supplies made back in the U.S. again, we'd be a lot better. Like I, I the fact that everything is outsourced, like damn near everything is made in China, it's, it's crazy. People forget these checks are supposed to cover responsibilities during the downtime, not fall out like a birthday might. Exactly, like a lot of people are doing that. Like they're they're treating this is crazy. You know, the one time we went to Target and we saw people buying TVs and stuff like that because they got their their check, and I'm like, yo, what what are you doing? Like we like who and I haven't gotten ours, and like when we do get ours, I want to put some of that away and be like, hey, you know. That can cover you know, her not working right now and cover a lot of the bills that we have. And I'm like, I would feel better with that. But you got people just blowing money like crazy. It's, it's, it's insane. And nothing's free, that is for sure. All the money they are giving us, they will make us pay back some way, probably through taxes. Dude, the taxes is going to be crazy. This is all basic economy 101. Yeah, and a lot of, it's crazy how a lot of people didn't pay attention to that. But everyone wants something for free. And, and the thing that gets me too is you have these content creators and in a very I'm very critical of content creators because a lot of a lot of us our sustainability if we're not making ad revenue is typically from you know donations, super chats, Patreon and stuff like that. I've always found it very, very funny how content creators are so critical of, you know, government taxes and all this other stuff. And yet they're the ones who don't pay. They don't work typical jobs. So it's like getting offended that people are getting money every month to cover expenses. Why? It, it's, I don't know, I, <laughs> I don't get it. Mine is in the account since I'm still working, but supposedly the cash is going to be put to the next year's tax payment. <laughs> the 
It's him. Uh, hey, Tim, you drop your likes now. It was a good night to everyone as I head out. <laughs> What's up, Rogue? Many times you idiots don't realize that when it comes to government, free equals pay it, pay for it during taxes. They just have no idea. They don't have any idea how it works. I kind of want to, I want to hear him say, uh, Wolverine's line of, let's go, Bob. Since he's basically Wolverine. Yo, what's up, uh, Fabian? How's it going? Congrats on your, your stream, man. You were killing it over there. Is it killing you from editing this Resident Evil timeline video? I gotta force yourself to rest. Well, you... how far have you gotten it down to now? Hey, so 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 I, I gotta bring it up because I find it funny. How, how do you have a, like, not you, like subjective, but like, how, how are there content creators with a $150 tier just to give a shout out to people who watch and support them? And once a month Skype call, like, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yo, like Fabian said, do not give those kind of people money. That is fuckery. I I I don't When I saw that, I'm like Man Brothers and sisters gather here today. We are going to kick out this this campfire. The level of bullshit that you would have to be on. <laughs> The level of bullshit you would have to be on. <laughs> I added this music in. My brothers and sisters, we are all gathered here today by the holy book that is Final Fantasy VII Remake Deluxe Edition. We are blessed by our Lord and Savior, Sephiroth, and the Holy Mother that is Genova. Blessed be he who takes upon the Mako and turns the Mako onto the materia and slots it into his weapon. 
I gather all of my children here in the church of Genova. We have come to give a holy campfire. While you eat, while you shit, these goddamn content creators, they con honors sucking up all the Mako. <laughs> I. The one thing, my brothers and sisters, the one thing that truly amazes me every time I, I see, and, and the more I do content creation, is the amount of people that come in that, that think that they can make a quick buck off of your hard on money. It's, it's truly amazing how you have people that you know, as brother one, I said, you telling me you can't hear the viewers crying out in pain. I know you can. It amazes me, my brothers and sisters, that there are con artists, con artists that are people that are on that bullshit, on that fuckery that Lord and Savior Sephiroth needs to deliver and take away from the promised land because I, the con artists, they're not even artists. They are otters. Con otters. Come on, child. Keep up. It it amazes me how we have people that think that content creation is a quick and easy money thing. Now, I'm a full-time content creator. I barely get by. But what helps me is Patreon, channel memberships, donations, the super chats from all of you, when bullshit, when, when, when YouTube is not on that bullshit, occasionally add revenue. But because, and I'm going to get real, my brothers and sisters, and I'm going to lay my hand on the holiness that is Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I'm going to testify to you all because with every, everything that you, you all invest into me, the reason that I am always busting my ass to make content. I am busting my ass to produce content and videos and podcasts is because I value, I value everything that each and every one of you invests into me, be it your money, your time, your opinions, whatever. That means a lot to me. And when I see content creators that don't, they don't even acknowledge, they don't even acknowledge they have viewers. They'll be like, oh yeah, we're a welcoming community. Now go fuck off because I don't want to deal with you unless you got that money. It's one of those cash me outsides. How about that type of situations? It's just truly remarkable how there are people that just don't care about the audience. As I've said before by each and every one of you that are here, like I truly appreciate each and every one of you because time is the one thing you can never get back. You can always re recoup money. You can always recoup, you know, expenses and everything else like that. But money, not money, but time, you never get that back. And seeing how you know, there are creators out there that have the audacity to want to con artists people out of their money. It's just, it's pure blasphemy for me. I don't understand it. And especially when you don't even make content as good. You know? You, you make, there are people that are making half ass content. And they want to charge that much. I'm sorry, 150 is a goddamn utility bill. Like, I just, I, I don't get it. There's not to mention when you start seeing people as numbers, it's, it makes the job a lot less fun for creator to be here. Yeah, it does. It really does. Cash me outside t-shirts. Cash me outside t-shirts now available on Teespring. To speak of the gospel. Open the eyes of the heathens. Brother McKell. Yes, my brother. Now look. Now if you are a content creator, and if you are suffering from the Mako poisoning that is 
fuckery. I need you to do something for me. I need you, my brothers and sisters, to raise your deluxe edition of, Res uh, of Final Fantasy VII Remake. I almost said Resident Evil, but that's also good. If you've got Operation Raccoon City or Resident Evil 3 Remake or Resident Evil 2 Remake, or if you've got the collector's edition, then please lift that son of a bitch up in the air, and I need you to raise your hand. Put your hand towards the, the, the screen. I need you to put your hand towards the screen, and I need you to repeat after me. I will not be about that bullshit. Lord Sephiroth and Mother Genova, please deliver me from the evil that is my greed. And if I continue any fuckery, please let me get a spike nail bow that is sharp with barbed wire and spike nails. And if I continue on the path of fuckery, let me shove that shit up my ass and rip my scrotum a whole new one. For I do not deserve the viewers and the fuckery that is trying to be about that greed. Now, if there's any content creators out there that needs to repent, Lord Sephiroth is a very forgiving pe person. He will mark you for the reunion. He will slice and dice you and kick your ass off the canyon because he cares. Now I can heal you, my brothers and sisters. I can heal you. Do not be about do not be about that bullshit or that fuckery. And when numbers don't add up, and you've never had a viral video, and in two to three months you go from zero to damn near a thousand subs. If you are spending your money buying subscribers, please repent for that level of fuckery. Do the work. Because we're not about that bullshit here. The golden rule, number one, is thou shalt not be about that bullshit. But in all seriousness, that was one, one unfortunate soul that needed to be taken care of. Because rule number two is thou shalt not engage in fuckery. And while we move away from, oh, brother one eye, please keep preaching that good word. Thou shalt not purchase thy gains and thy success. Thou shalt grind and put in and do the fucking work as gamers around the world would say, get good and doing content creation. And my brothers and sisters, as we wrap up this holy ceremony here, I have to engage in one other. <laughs> Number four is thou shalt do thou and not another. And by doing thou, that means you will beat off to yourself and not to the money that you spend to buy fake followers and thou shalt not pay a hundred and fifty dollars y'all oh mm, i'm slapping my knee right now i feel the holy ghost of the mother and the son lord sephiroth flowing through me as brother game of thumbs tv said thou shalt not pay a hundred and fifty dollars for a shout out for whosoever should pay a hundred and fifty dollars to a con artist that would do that is full of the most inscrutable levels of bile and filth and pilau shit that there is you are by definition if you pay a hundred and fifty dollars for a shout out and a one hour once a month skype call you are a simp and the other rule is if you cannot abide by these rules the golden rules of the Church of Genova, you will be made famous. Because certain people like to go around and round and round and round to everybody's group, big and small creators, to get their name out. That's not how you do it. And the next rule is thou shalt not be either a Richard or a Karen, 
nor an Eddie, unless that is your actual name, but don't be a Richard, a Karen, or an Eddie, and thou shalt not, actually no, thou shalt follow the path, the true path of the Creator, and do just work. Because we're, we, we do not care about that bullshit. And the other rule is thou shalt not cross the cartel of the coconut. Thou shalt not worship carrots. That's right, brother Altus. Now, as we wrap up this, this holy ceremony, I've got one other thing that I need to do. I need to roast a motherfucker for some shit. So... There's a motherfucker that decided he wanted to give me some tips, right? And I really find it funny how when someone wants to criticize you and put you down for shit that you do, but then you see that they're only around to try and copy you. I find it very funny. And the reason I want to just speak, I want to speak freely on this because this is off the dome. This is just, this is unfiltered. Y'all know brain to mouth filter doesn't work for me. Now I'm just going to speak frankly because I'm really tired of seeing this type of bullshit because it continues to happen time and time and time again. And I'm seeing a lot of people that have been showing up either on the streams or on Twitter or in the discord. And the only times that they ever show up, they ever show up is when I have gaming industry guests or voice actors. And after, oh, I got to hit him with the one winged angel thing. Uh, Edward, I've already been demonetized. All right, well, fuck it. We are gonna do another one. We are gonna do something real different this time. So. There are individuals. Mm. Sing it. Mm. Hit that note. My vengeance shall not be swayed. So there are people that for some reason want to clout chase. And the reason they want to clout chase and the way that they're going to go about it is like I said, they show up in the discord, they show up on Twitter, they show up on the streams. And the only time they ever fucking show up is when they want to try and get a connection. And then they have the audacity to want to give me tips, right? And I find it interesting. I find it very interesting because it's almost like a lot of people don't realize that I can sniff out the bullshit, right? And it's just amazing how people don't want to do the work. Now, look, I've been a content creator for four, almost four years. Almost four years I've been a content creator. And I have been full time since September last year. And before I was ever full time, I worked 60, 70, 80, up to 90 hours, sometimes 100 hours a week. I would bust my ass to try and build a brand and establish myself when I had nothing other than my work. I went out of my way with nothing and no idea how, and I carved my own path. I went from a failed podcast 
with a jackass named Cameron Biggs, who used to be my best friend, to creating my own podcast. And that podcast is the number one podcast in Hawaii, not because it's just some tagline bite soundbite, but because I've legitimately worked my ass off to get there. I have busted my ass, gone without sleep, dealing with people with other time zones. Six hour time differences for me to the East Coast is six hours. For me, for me to do stuff with people internationally is usually 10 hours to a day and a half ahead of where I am. And even with a full time job, I grinded and did everything that I had to do to build the brand of the podcast. I did everything I had to do to network and create relationships with people in the gaming and tech industries. Yes, if you look at it by numbers, I am a smaller creator. I don't have massive numbers, but what I did do is I grew organically by putting in the time and putting in the work. I didn't go around to everybody's fucking group. Hi guys, I'm such and such. Watch my videos, come to my Discord. Bye, toodles. I didn't do that. Anyone here can tell you, anybody that knows me, I'm one of the realest motherfuckers in the room because for good and for worse, I speak my mind and I keep it 100. And it's just interesting there are people that want all the benefits but don't want to do the work and I don't get it when it came to me learning how to do shit on YouTube learning how to edit I didn't know how to do edits on videos I didn't know how to use Photoshop I didn't know how to do anything but guess what I use a simple thing called Google and I learned and I taught myself how to do what I needed to know to be better at this because the dream for me was I want to make this a career I want to be able to go full-time and if I'm going to say that I want to go full-time and I want to do this I got better fucking well be good at it I better learn it and I was so hungry for this at the expense of anything else my sleep, my health, my mental state of being, so I can make this happen. Because anything that's worth having is worth fighting for and it's not easily given to you. I value this. Even if I'm at a point where I only have anywhere from five viewers, 10 viewers, 17 viewers, 20 viewers. Even if to some people that's not a lot. You know what? I earned each and every one of those goddamn viewers. Because they fuck with me. Because they see I put in the time, I put in the work, and I do everything. I bust my ass. I bust my ass to give them the best of me. And when I see creators cut corners and being lazy and manipulative to show, just to just shit on those who are putting in the work, it pisses me off. so tired of these goddamn con artists that keep popping up left and right and it's like you can't honestly talk about this shit because oh you're gonna start drama you might offend someone well fuck your feelings because i don't care i earned my spot where i'm at and i'm not even where i want to be but i will never step on someone else to get ahead every connection every relationship I have, everything that is Mikel Casanova as a brand and as a person, I have worked my ass off for. And I'm tired of seeing these people cut corners. I just, it, it drives me up the wall. And then I have people that hit me up that don't even talk to me, but they want, oh, I need, I want to start a podcast. 
I want to start a YouTube channel. What do I need to do? Put in the fucking work. Learn shit. Google it. Why is that so fucking hard? I don't get it. But everyone wants to be PC. We just want to get along. Then you got the people that have these fake ass discords where if you say something and you go and fend somebody, then you're going to get to the point where they're going to want to boot you. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. And I'll tell you this about anyone who's in my discord, anyone who fucks with me, I keep things 100. If I can dish it out, if I can dish out something, I can take it too. But if you're in my group, if you rock with me, I'm not going to get offended to things that you say. We can not agree on something and still be cool. But you got a lot of these content creators with fucking egos as soft as a wizard sleeve pussy on Samantha 38 G shout out to her that cannot, they cannot deal with someone who doesn't kiss their ass. All these safe spaces, they're safe until you actually cross somebody. If you come with me, you come in my discord, if you rock with me, if you hang out with me, then you would know I got your back. No matter, you can be wrong and I still rock. With you. I'll tell you to your face, motherfucker, you fucked up, but I'll be honest about it. But I still rock with you because everybody makes mistakes. But this whole fake bullshit of content creators that's out here, I'm tired of it. You said I had a cousin I rarely talked to called me the other day to give his 14 year old son advice and mentor him on starting to tell him. Like, exactly. If he wants to learn, Google it, YouTube it, it's there. I don't understand why everyone thinks that things need to be given to you on a silver platter. It doesn't work that way. You want it, go out and get it. Bust your ass, work hard. Rome wasn't built in a day. Societies and civilization wasn't built in a day. We worked towards it. It's called progress. If you can't do that, if you, if you are a content creator, and you're get, if, if someone says something to you online and you get offended and you got to go, Oh, my mental health, fuck your mental health. I'm so tired of these other, I'm tired of that with content creators and motherfuckers in the gaming industry. They want to say some stupid shit and then retreat on saying, oh, my mental health, fuck you and your mental health because you don't have mental health problems. You a fucking bitch, bitch ass pussy. That's what you are. That's what you are. And you ain't got the balls. You ain't got the cojones to stand to your word and say it, for, say it loud and say it with your chest. That's your problem. Because the minute everybody wants to act tough, they want to start and start shit that they can't finish. They want to say shit that if they say something and somebody steps to them, they cower. Look at the game and journalist that stepped to me. I call that son of a bitch out. Look, look, jackass. You want to say something to me? Say it to me. Tag me next time. I don't play that bullshit. And it's like, when it comes to these creators that have been lurking in our discord group, lurking in the fucking streams that only want to pop up and notice this, anyone who's in my discord group, have you all noticed how, whenever I say something about do not fucking post in the discord server and then ghost notice that when I tag that and I say, Hey, if you continue to do that, you will get removed. Notice how all these people all of a sudden get active. I'll tell you this. A lot of motherfuckers are in our discord group because the only reason that they're there is they think that they're going to be able to get a connection with someone in the game industry that happens to be in a discord group. Cause they think, Oh, if, 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 if I've got somebody that, you know, in, in if industry, I'm going to get all this free shit, but guess what? With all that comes great responsibilities. And for the motherfuckers that want to give me tips, here's here's a little word for you. 
And let me get a little closer. Let me get a little closer to the microphone. And let me tell you with the camera, if you want to give me some fucking tips on how to write fucking articles, you want to give me tips on how to do my goddamn YouTube channel and my fucking brand. If you really want to tell me with some goddamn tips, why don't you get your fucking numbers up and actually stop trying to leech off of every motherfucker that there is and get your own shit straight. And for the motherfuckers that are copying my podcast, because I can just speak on, you know, let me get up, uh, let me get right back up in your face. And for the motherfuckers that continue to copy my goddamn podcast from my question layout, my my style, my format, to even the way I fucking tweet. For each and every one of you guys who continues to copy me, I know you lurk in my streams. I know you lurk in my Discord. I know you watch every fucking tweet that I put up. And I look at what you do, the style, the cadence, the format, the structuring of the tweets, every fucking thing you're copying. Am I flattered? I knew (laughs) I am flattered and I am pissed off at the same goddamn time because you're trying to get something that you will never have. You're never going to be able to do what I'm doing because you know why I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because it's a fucking passion. A lot of you are doing this and copying me because you see something that works and you think I'm just going to cookie cutter and do this and it's going to be, it's going to work. No, it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. It's, 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 it's funny to me how you got people who watch, watch my streets of rage stream. And then when, 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 when I am, when I am talking, when I'm streaming with my wife and we are playing Streets of Rage and then we talk about playing Turtles in Time and then someone pops up in my Discord asking me questions and boom, two minutes later, they're streaming Turtles in Time. And then as we're streaming Streets of Rage, they're streaming it. Because guess what? There are two creators, myself and Gamer Thumb, who had already planned a while back to do Streets of Rage. But then after we started doing it, then you got other people who are copying us. I find this shit, and let me get back up in your face, because I find this shit. Look, look, let me get the goddamn camera. Can y'all fucking see me? Can you see me? Because I, I, I got something I want to say. I find this shit fucking hilarious. All you copycats out, all you copycats out there that want to, to, to just shamelessly plagiarize. And then I want to talk about the motherfuckers that after I interview someone, yeah, motherfucker, you motherfucker. After I interview someone, then you want to be the first one to go and talk to them so you can have them on your show tired of it if you think I don't see you if you think I don't see you I see you my eye is right there on you all you copycats you're never going to be successful because you have no passion for it you're just looking you're throwing shit against the goddamn wall to see what will stick and none of it does so copy me all you want continue even if that means you copy even if that means you copy my goddamn layout on my stream and do so and if another motherfucker wants to continue to come in my streams all the goddamn time and talk about their fucking computer i don't give a damn about your computer i'm not helping you with your channel you can do what i did and everyone else who's a content creator and fucking figure it out on your goddamn own because it's not that hard not do the work it's tiring but I, I I've said everything I want to say actually one other th- to all you motherfuckers that's been bitching at me 
each and every one of you motherfuckers that's been bitching at me about one fucking dollar on Patreon. Let me say this to you, because there are people who are donating ten dollars, twenty five dollars every goddamn month. People here on YouTube that are channel members, they're doing five and ten dollars a month. People who come through and they drop a hundred dollars, fifty dollars, ten dollars, five dollars, twenty five dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, eight hundred fucking dollars and a goddamn stream. And you're bitching at me about one fucking dollar. Really? Take your dollar, crumple the bitch up. I'm trying to find paper. Take your goddamn dollar, crumple the shit up, stick it up your nose, and go fuck yourself. And with that being said, how are we doing, everyone? How are we doing? So, <laughs> so, um, yeah, how y'all living? I feel better. Do y'all feel better? I'm gonna take another, sh another sip of Mike's harder. Black cherry. It's right here. I picked it up. It's real good. So. <laughs> I. <laughs> Tell me how you all really feel right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Omar gets credit for one winged angel in the background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And not to mention, it's much more rewarding doing the work yourself. It is. It's the Asian Orange Miguel Casanova style. Uh, you said the earth has been scorched. Screw Napalm. Meteor has been cast. While the title that was for I, I just, that's just been some things that have been just, <sighs> I need to speak on, I need to speak on it because I cannot believe I have people that are $1 patrons that are out here demanding. I give them free codes, give and and promote them give them every contact that i have in the gaming and tech industry and bring them on my show for one dollar
I'm not done yet. I have something else to say. Now, <laughs> there is a motherfucker that I kicked from my Discord. And his name is Thread, and I'll put his name out there. I didn't put other people's name out there, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring up his name. And this guy came in our Discord, and the only thing he does is complain. And he had the nerve to tell me that he doesn't watch anybody's content, doesn't watch my content, because he views supporting YouTubers as wrong. He doesn't believe in hitting a like button, watching content. He actually watched YouTubers content with ad block. And the reason he does that is so that they don't get any type of ad revenue because he doesn't believe in supporting a company like YouTube to pay out his creators. And he also, at the same time, does not feel that he should support creators in any way. You don't always have to support financially. But he believes YouTube isn't a job and we don't deserve any type of compensation for what we put ourselves through and what we have decided to do as a career. And I said to this motherfucker, let me take you to the promised land because I want to ask you, if you watch movies, you listen to music, that's not a traditional career, but it is a career nonetheless. And I'm sure you buy movies, tickets. I'm sure you buy music, CDs, MP3s. I'm, I'm sure with as far of a stick up your ass that you have, I'm sure you have Apple Music or Spotify subscribed every goddamn month. And given that you have that, why should you fuck over us content creators? Now, I know there's a lot of you out there who do not like ads on your goddamn videos, which is fine. But here's the thing. Support creators that you enjoy. And if you're not going to support them, don't watch them. And don't waste their time. And three, and I booted you because you are a lousy piece of shit. And I don't ever want anyone else like that associated with me. It just... This is a job at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, while it's fun and games, it's laughing. When I stream, I do this because I need to get paid and I also enjoy it. I have a passion for it. I'm demonetized already. But guess what? I'm still going to stream because I want to give you guys a good fucking time. But everyone who's here watches with they watch the ads or they support by hitting the like button by sharing it by being here when I stream and for these people who like to say this isn't a job try to do what we do edit edit a fucking video do a 10 minute video with 40 hours worth of content. Do audio balancing level. It's not easy. And to demean what we do as content creators, and yes, there are a bunch of frauds out there trying to charge people 150 fucking dollars for a goddamn shout out. There are con artists out there, but there are really good creators that are here. And it is an insult to those of us who bust their asses and look I don't get I don't have 
I don't have 100,000 subscribers. I don't have hundreds of views. If I do a video, if it, if it takes off, it takes off. If it doesn't, I still keep at it because I love this as a passion. But for people to come in and think that what I do is a joke, and I'm just sitting on my ass playing games all day and I'm not doing work, fuck you. Thren, you're a piece of shit. Fuck yourself. And burn in the fires of me blind. Okay, children, how are we doing? Are y'all ready? So you notice all these creators that get burned out and depressed are often. Yeah, they're obsessed with numbers and it's it's the worst thing you can do as a creator. If you don't have a passion for this, you'll never succeed. You have to love this. And it's like, we're not always compensated for our time and energy and effort. But at some point, maybe we will be. But this is a job. So, um, <clears throat> I said a lot of things. If I offended anyone's feelings, then I want you to hold yourself and go fuck yourself. Just fuck your feelings. But, um, I, there are some things I just need to say. I need to speak on it. And I'm... tired of a lot of the stupid shit that I continue to see. Uh, but other than that, uh, did y'all enjoy the roast? I was actually quite literal in everything I was saying. Like I, it, I know it came off funny because of my delivery, but at the same time, I, uh, I did mean what I, I said with it. I don't care about PPs. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so much need where is that to be said? Um, I barely drank any of it. Even Speedwagon scared me. Yeah. YouTube is so scared that they demonetized me, but it's whatever. It is whatever. I will never censor myself to be politically correct. And the frauds need to be called out.
I didn't check, but how many dislikes do I have on this video now? None. Wow. <laughs> to play with your sword okay we know you like your sword so long as the sword you're holding up is the actual sword and not the dick i'm cool with it i'll hold mine up with you Yeah, no pork sword. <laughs> he said they'd be too shook to do anything. <laughs> um. No, it's just, you know. This is one of those things, you know, as I see so many people that are, um, Well, you're always talking about playing with your sword, man. I don't know if you're talking about your dick or an actual weapon. Maybe your dick is a weapon. I don't know. You know, sometimes when you got BBC, that's a we lethal weapon to women. I don't know. I just have to specify. <laughs> Not all are lethal. I mean, if, you, if, if some folks work with Chubb, so. <laughs> so I just imagine the Grand Theft Auto scenes running around with a fake purple dildo. <laughs> hey, hey, look, Edward. Don't take offense to what I'm, I'm just saying for clear. You, you, you do talk often about your sword and now I've seen a real literal sword. I'm just saying. Yes, Lehu was behind, behind me the whole time and she had to hear everything I said. Hey, Bobby Senpai is just, he's my spirit animal, okay? I don't swing that way. I've seen a, he, he does own weapons, but you know, 
a lot of people and they talk about playing with swords you never know they could be talking about playing with the dick <laughs> HLO, I'm sure a lot of people did. Hey, I ain't the one out here talking about playing with swords all the time. I'm just saying. Some folks. Look, look, perfect example is when some folks say things and don't realize <laughs> wait you ever you have a nickname for your dick you call it snoodle hey i mean whatever floats your boat man i'm not judging i'm not over here judging you do your thing homie I mean, I don't swing that way. <laughs> so this is basically me, me running around doing Berserker Barrage. See though, how do a lot of you guys feel about like you know the folks that are copycatting and the uh, folks charging 150 to have people you know do a shout out? Or Resident Evil size rocket launching your pants. They both are fuck. I, you know, it's just one of those things where, like, I, I, it says a lot. Zero, you say you were surprised you weren't expecting to hear that. I, I don't think anyone was, man. That, that was, um, it was definitely a surprise. I 
I like playing his soul actually. He um From the little bit I played of him just now, I mean he's a significantly faster Unica. It doesn't seem like he takes a lot of damage though. One of the things I was kind of worried about is like, oh, if I'm going to play his hand, then he's going to take more damage to compensate for his, uh, his output, but no, he doesn't. Ever say, all you want to know is when is Shimu and Ninja Gaiden coming back? Uh, that's all the depending on if y'all want to see that. I mean, we have a, a thing in there for people to vote on what. So, unlike other people, I don't charge folks if they want to see me play a game. I mean, it is a benefit of one of my Patreon tiers, but this is one of those things. You know, I'm not really going to. If, if, if y'all in majority want to see some, I, I do know. Yeah, she will be. The only thing about Shinmu is it's not very streamer friendly in the sense of it's um it's not engaging to watch i guess you could say Yeah, it it is. It's it's definitely fun to play, but it's just it is boring to watch. Wait, you say you caught up on the Star Wars video? Jesus Christ, man! That's been what five months ago? Almost six months ago now. So I'll say this too. Um, Edward, I know you're not around a whole lot. Um, this really goes for anyone. Uh, and this is something for anyone who may be lurking or quite curious if they don't have a mod status anymore. Um, if you no longer have a mod status, it's because your ass isn't around it a whole lot. And look, I, it is not mandatory to be here on every stream. You don't have to be on any stream. But if now I look at giving a moderation, and, and 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 let me mute the game and speak on this real talk. If you're given a mod status on anyone's streams, like I, I don't make anyone pay for it. It's not a tier, you know, benefit of a tier or anything like that. I get people moderation statuses because one, I like you to on a level. I trust you. And there are a lot of people who do show up here and there show up, say one thing, disappear. And many of them have been mods. And my thing is, I don't see a reason to maintain you being a mod for my channel 
if you're not here. And that's just how it is. You know, if you're if you're not going to be here watching because there are people who are here that watch that are that have been here since before we even got to where we have this many people watching now. And if they're going to be here and I interact with you a lot outside of streaming, then I'll give you the mod status because to me, we're all in this together, but the people who pop up here and there and then say something and disappear and never come back. Yeah. You're not going to have your mod status and this shit's not personal. It's just what it is, what it is. And I think the, the biggest, well, you may not get, notifications but you have this you're you're in the discord group notifications are always pushed out unless you have discord muted so and this is not targeted towards you edward this is just in general this is a psa um the biggest example of why the moderation thing is so imperative and so helpful is yesterday yesterday's stream of resident evil 7 you all saw how crazy that got and I want to thank each and every one of you guys that are here that are mods that took care of that because, you know, there are some people who just wouldn't, who just like the idea of having a blue wrench and don't show up or feel that they, you know, they want it, but they don't want to. And when you're a mod, either in a company, in a discord, in a stream, in anything like that it's like you have to you have to take that with a weight of responsibility and if it's something you don't want then let the creator or person know you know maybe you said it has one a day coming to yours tonight just to post the last of us two spoilers some people go into streams just to call it. yeah they do mods like you said mods are huge importance they really are like for instance um Yesterday, we had someone popping up with multiple accounts, uh, dropping the N word with the hard R, uh, spelling it out. I've never had to ban words in any stream before. I've never had to ban as many accounts as I had to yesterday. But if it wasn't for my mods here, that would have been a terrible stream. And it was hard to. And I try not to, you know, anytime I have a hiccup on the channel, I try not to, like, let it affect me. But that that right there, um, it, it did have an impact on me in a way. Because when I was streaming Resident Evil 7 yesterday, there were people from Capcom. You know, Kathy from Capcom was watching. Uh, Nick Apostolides was watching who would have hopped on the stream with us, but he can't be associated with that. And this is why I'm, I'm grateful to my mods because you guys took care of that. But yeah, there's a lot of people and I know I do give out the, the wrench frequently because I think some people are going to be cool and be around, but there are a lot of people who just pop up here and there who I don't personally feel should have that status anymore because this has gotten to a point where it's like, this is my career and stuff like that does affect me. But it also, it also negatively in fact impacts the viewer who is what the final product of all this goes towards. So I don't want people coming in, you know, and that could have been the first time we had over 70 people watching yesterday. And that clown was doing that multiple accounts dropping the N word. And it, 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 what's to say that out of those 70 people, whether or not they were view bots or whatever, what, what's to say that that didn't give them a negative impression of this, of our group of this channel. So that is a responsibility in the power of mods to, to help quell that. You work with the creator. So um, if there are people who no longer have that status now, it's just because you're not fucking here. And everyone doesn't need to have that.
power. I don't know. What do you guys think? You've earned that right. You're always here. <clears throat> the, the power of the blue wrench is compelled upon you. He said, you guys, certain folks should only have the wrenches. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Like, I've just been going through that. Changing that around because I'm like, a lot of folks don't need that wrench. Take it away from. Is he still clowning in your streams? Some people really don't need it. He pops up and sometimes just to be negative. Yeah, and that's another thing too. Sometimes you absolutely have to ignore some folks in your streams that want to just say and do stupid shit. And don't worry about yesterday. Anybody can see that it was troll. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, still, still, there may be some people that, like, you know, I did get some feedback from, you know, Nick and Kathy and other folks that just pull up my streams and watch and they saw that so specifically when i do certain streams like uh capcom related streams capcom tends to watch those um and you know stuff like that can affect you know my ability to partner with them or maintain my partnership that i currently have with them um i'm going to be doing a series of sponsored streams for skater xl coming up very soon with reverb games and uh, I've also got a upcoming partnership with uh, Physicality Games and also, um, whatchamacallit, also, uh, what's, um, Limited Run Games, as well as Facebook Gaming. So with those upcoming partnerships and interviews and stuff that I'm working on with them, you know, if I'm doing a live stream and that kind of stuff is happening, like that has to be handled quickly. Yeah, as you said, like Fabian, like when I had the interview with John, and then yeah, there was a guy who was complaining, like, "Oh, you're just talking about black people and stuff. You're not talking about Final Fantasy." Last up, that dude had to be banned. And when I had Tommy Tallarico on, and you had the people clowning over, you know, with him, they had to be banned too. And it's like that kind of stuff. And that's another one. I'm I am partnering with Tommy Tallarico and some further projects and. You know, you, you, I have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful. You know, uh, what's up, Nick Tindo? And, um, I appreciate people who are here, you know, who are here often and, and our mods that are taking care of that because it is, it really does, you know, it gets to a point and, you know, Fabian can speak to this as well. We are a brand, we're a business. And that kind of stuff affects us negatively. And we we heavily rely upon you guys who are mods, who are here for the streams. You know, maybe not every stream, but if you're here frequently and you're you're handling it, it means a lot that you guys take care of you 
take care of a lot of that stuff for us. Because it, it is difficult being able to, you know, you're trying to play a game. You're trying to be entertaining. You're trying to make sure you're catching up with the chat. And you're multitasking back and forth. And then if you got someone clowning, you have to make sure that you're not moved by that. And then you never know who's watching at the same time. So it's, um, it's mentally taxing. And you guys that are mods who take care of that, you guys are, you know, we really appreciate what you guys do. He said, I'm not going to lie, hitting that hide user from channel button felt satisfying. Yeah, he got sent to the Phantom Zone. <laughs> I didn't know the Capcom reps would find time to watch streams. They seem lax compared to some companies, but that's from an outside perspective, I guess. I work directly with Capcom. Um, I've been working with them for over a year uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of different projects and stuff like that. And um, even if I wasn't working with them, companies are always watching. And several of the interviews I've done, uh, companies do. When they're looking at prospective content creators to work with, they do look at stuff. Like even my rant, the rant I did earlier, maybe that could have affected something. But a lot of people know that's part of my shtick is the rant. But when it comes to that kind of stuff, like the stuff with the interview with John or the stuff with um, the Resident Evil stream yesterday, um, companies look at that. Like right now with um, when I do Final Fantasy VII streams or if I do uh, Trails of Mana or uh, Trials of Mana streams, Square Enix is actually looking at that because I do have a partnership with Square Enix. So that's not for everybody, but there are occasions where companies are, will be looking because they're always looking for the next creator to bring into their ranks. And just like any other, any job they get, we got some free time here and there. Yeah. Uh, we've had occasions where like devs have actually hung out in our streams and, uh, kicked it with us. So, yeah, it happens. Yeah, so like I said, like, I don't want anyone taking it personally. Um, if you no longer have a mod status, it's it's just, if you're not here that often, eh, it's, it's not personal. It's just, um, if you've got it, you have it for a reason, you're here frequently, and, you know. Welcome to the family, son. Yo, thank you to Lasaji Washington for the subscribe. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't want anyone taking that personally. If you don't have it anymore, it's you, you're probably not around, and it could be a number of reasons. You could be busy. You could be doing other things. But you know, it's not personal. Uh, uh, what you mean? Their language? It really does, huh? interesting and I feel like he understands what they're saying so his gameplay is different where I don't have to um,
So I don't need to go back to base to get my weapons. So I guess all I'm gonna need to do is gather Claria ore and or Rotafruit and give it to one of the um, the ruse, and I guess they they take care of it. Anyway, what's everybody up to? Uh, I know I did my rant. I spoke on some real shit. And um, not gonna lie, I'm at this point, I'm a little bit buzzed. No drinking on the, the purple drink. Are you playing games or watching your stream? What what uh what game are you playing? Oh, uh, ready to redemption one. Nice. They're rip and tear, but just on Xbox and Doom Eternal. <laughs> so, real question. How do you guys feel about my direct and blatant honesty about things? How direct I am. Do you guys find it a bit much? Or do you like that I'm not politically correct? I'm already used to it. You know it doesn't bother me. <laughs> like, I know it can get me in trouble. Like, and I do pick and choose when I do say certain things, even if it doesn't seem that way. Um, it's just some things really. Ugh. Welcome back. I'm used to it. Doesn't bother me. It's not that you're, you're not politically correct. I like that you're not going to hold back anything. And it's, you know, especially on this platform, and in this day and age, it's hard to maintain being, you know, you see so many people that pretend to be something. And I just, I don't have the time, the energy, or the mental capacity to do so. Uh, because a lot of people, they're one way on camera and completely different off camera. There was a YouTuber, and I'll bring him up. Um, I used to like this YouTuber, Blander. And I thought his videos were funny as fuck. I thought his energy, his cadence, and everything was fucking amazing. But. Then I interviewed him 
and saw that he is not the person he pretends to be on, or he portrays himself, not pretends to be. He's not the person he portrays himself as um, on camera, off camera. And there's a lot of people on YouTube, there's a lot of streamers on Twitch and Mixer that are like that. And, you know, there's a saying like, never meet your heroes. And I've been learning that as I've been a creator. A lot of them are not worth it. He said, being politically correct is not something that I like saying. Yeah, I hate it. Like, if you gotta just tell me straight. <laughs> Do you know who was kind of like that? A coffee break dude I was interviewed by. Once he had recorded his. Yo! Oh, dude. I was so. I remember watching that interview you did with him. And I could not believe how he would not let you talk. He was literally constantly trying to control the narrative of the show. He would let you say something and then immediately cut you off to push his own narrative. And it was so awkward, like, seeing you. You're like. You ever hear like like David Hayter at the beginning of the Mel Gear Solid Four, and the lady was like, "Change your fate." Touching words from David Hayter. He's like, "That's that's not what I said," <laughs> and that was you. You were like, "Motherfucker, can I talk? Can I say something, please?" Um. And then it just pissed me off with him. Is like he put as big of a channel he he has. He put the interview he did with you on his second channel. I was like, the fuck? And then you got other people like the quartering and whatnot that are one way on camera and then another off. And it's, ugh. He said, I can't watch anything recording anymore after that. That situation exposed how much of a fraud he is. The quartering, like many of these people, will only hop on something that's trending to get their name out. They'll do very, the very bare minimum, and then they'll act like they did everything. They take all the credit, and they do absolutely nothing. It's like... Um, and I'm not trying to take shots at the other guy, but you know the guy who kept calling you Gamer Thumbs? And you're, it's like right there, it's Gamer Thumb TV. He's calling you Gamer Thumbs. He's not as bad, but he he's also another person that I noticed it. Trend chases. Like I said, YouTube is like Game of Thrones. Enemies are everywhere. Yeah. And then you got the folks who lurk. I didn't pretend to be your friends. Like, it, it's. Uh. And there's the spies. Yeah, the people that just lurk or they're they're just around so they can see the opportunity. 
Dude, there's a lot of good people on YouTube too. Just gotta learn to read people. Well, that's true. There are some good people on there. Um, and it's important. And, and for anyone who's a content creator looking to become one, I don't want anyone getting. Yes, I'm a, I'm a bit tipsy right now. I don't want anyone to um to think I'm jaded or, or get jaded thinking that everyone is fucked up on YouTube. Not everyone is. There are some really good people um, on YouTube that, you know, and Twitch and Mixer and in the games industry, they're really good people. It's just the amount of shitty people are more prevalent and stand out a lot more. And a lot of people who are good cannot, they can't publicly say a lot of things. And sometimes they have to go along to get along. Yeah, shitty people do. They make all the rest of us look bad. It's like that stuff with Alidity. She finally got banned or suspended. And then she's like, I take this responsibility for my actions. I'm so, I'm, I'm going to learn and take away from this. And she makes this goddamn post and then poses in her fucking lingerie. <laughs> I swear, one of the things I cannot stand is how so many females talk about wanting there to be, no, that there's no difference between men and women, that they want to be treated the same, and yet they don't want to be treated the same. Anyone saying that there's no difference between men and women? That they were not treated differently is a goddamn lie because situations there are privileges that women have that men never will and i'm sorry a pair of tits and some pussy to get you a long way and there's a lot of women that instead of using brains and intellect and wit and skill will use that and i'm just gonna be honest on twitch I've seen some of the most talentless people, prim primarily females, on Twitch. They have no skill, no talent, nothing other than their looks. The fact that painting your tits is an ASMR where you're whispering into the microphone. I said it before and I'll say it again. I don't even give a damn who believes it. If there wasn't as much money, fame, and publicity that comes into gaming being mainstream and streaming being mainstream, um, a lot of women wouldn't hop on it. They wouldn't. He said she got suspended for one day, then decided to take two more days off. And then there's a one that one viper that has voices in it. <laughs> so if anyone else did that they'd be banned. Yeah, they would be. He said also let me bring up how some people think jumping on Twitch is so much better than YouTube. Look at the issues they have over there. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that they and then when there are regulations put into place to prevent the sexualization of Twitch or streaming as a whole, like on all platforms or say, Oh, this is toxic masculinity. This is, you know, trying to make sure that we can't do this, this, and this, this is shaming women. My thing is why are you on? Why are you on Twitch, which is a gaming site to paint your tits? Why are you on Twitch? Why are there sections of Twitch to breastfeeding? And I'm not against breastfeeding, but why does that need to be stream worthy? Why do these women need to exploit their children? And I think we're setting a dangerous precedence to teaching the young women coming up that this is 
this is fine. So they don't need to have a skill or, or a trade or skill set. Yeah, that girl that said simping is good. Because yeah, they don't want, because they don't want to go to the hub. Yeah, all platforms do have issues. I agree. Like me being demonetized all the time uh, on YouTube. So I don't understand the body art thing. It doesn't bother me at all. But isn't Twitch? The thing, yeah, and that's the thing is like that's not related to gaming. And the and you know you got these stream coaches that always tell you you need to go on if you want to make a career in streaming or make it you need to go on Twitch. And I'm like, how do you compete? I don't get it. I don't. I'm not even bothered by it either. By them. But it's like <laughs> is it the advice these coaches get? Now, let's be honest, a lot of these stream coaches are con artists, snake oil salesmen. If you're paying somebody to teach you how to be successful on streaming and they don't have proof work or a body of work or they stream once every three months oh yeah ps4 after dark i remember that It's about being successful. Now, where's my back? <laughs> well, here's the thing I don't understand. Why do people think that streaming on YouTube is what kills your channel? Why do they think that streaming only has to happen on Twitch? I don't understand the logic of going of you only have to be on the most oversaturated platform. Quality over quantity. But you have all these people that I guess do well on Twitch and then they want to come over to YouTube, make YouTube videos where they're like sucking the sucking dick face. And then I don't know, some beaver teeth stream coaches kind of look like they do suck a lot of teeth and they that brought beaver rabbit tooth probably like scrapes against anyway uh back to my point um it's weird it's almost like they don't want another platform to do well Uh, there are some instances where if you only stream YouTube or promote you as much, take Geeks and Gamers for example. True. But at the same time, I think 
when it comes to promotion, you have to. A lot of it has to fall into yourself, you know. Like you have to promote your your own stuff. And if YouTube does, they do. If they don't, they don't. Like YouTube doesn't promote me, but I still got seventeen of you guys here watching. I could have none. But at least it lets me know I'm not shallow man. Yeah, agreed. Damn it. Are you serious? He had a sliver of hell. Wow. That's some bullshit. I think it's people seeing you the same way gamers see EA. Angel, I think you're right. I think, uh, and this idea is like you have to be. So here's something I don't understand. When you talk to people who stream on Twitch, one of the things they always want to tell you is Twitch is a platform. It's not going to promote you. Uh, you're not going to get an audience just from streaming. So a lot of these stream coaches and other people, Harris Heller, Ashley Christ, all these other people will tell you, even Gale Level will tell you, you need to go to YouTube, create content on YouTube to get people to look at you and then drag those people from YouTube to Twitch. And I'm thinking that's a lot of work to have a lot of loyalty for a platform that's not going to take care of you, right? So. I mean, I'm not saying like you can't make a living on Twitch. I know a lot of people that do really well on Twitch, but, and I understand marketing as well, but the one thing about Twitch is it's so niche, right? And it's only for one type of content. I don't have to worry about that here. I can stream, I can make my pre-recorded content. I can do whatever. I have my community, whereas I don't need to go to multiple different platforms other than like promoting on Twitter and Instagram. But yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Jeez. It's not saying, uh, he said, from a business point of view, it doesn't make sense. Why would YouTube not promote streams? It keeps people on the channel longer. I'm not saying that that's the only reason, but one of the reasons YouTube changes algorithm a lot for how it chooses to do things. So it could be said of Twitch and Mixer too. Uh, algorithms itself learning is constantly changing. If anyone claims to understand how it works, they're fooling themselves. I argue this on Twitch, everyone is streaming. On YouTube, not every creator is much harder to stand out on Twitch.
Yeah, I was on Twitch for two years. And so was uh, my wife, Leela. We never grew. And we did everything that these Twitch pros said. This is a, I think it's, it's just a matter of, it's, it's too many variables. Because Twitch as a platform doesn't even promote people. Unless you're bringing in the money. The only people you'll see them promote, Amaranth, Alinity, uh, whoever is the most popular Fortnite person or whoever. It's because I didn't pay those coaches enough. <laughs> I didn't do it right. Okay, so I have to learn with this fight, Toll takes way more damage. I think for a lot of you guys too, um, do you guys prefer YouTube or Twitch or Mixer for like content consumption? Like for a lot of you here, uh, and I'm not saying for everyone, but for you guys here, what is your preferred method? Hello, you say you prefer YouTube. Omar prefers YouTube. Uh, Zero says YouTube. When I watch the most, so I do go over to Twitch sometimes. He said, for me, it's so inconvenient going to another platform to watch someone. So if I watch streams on YouTube and that creator jumps to Twitch, I'll likely not watch the streams anymore. And see, that's the thing too. Like one of the reasons why I'm very apprehensive about going straight to Twitch or Mixer because it's like, you know, going to another platform right now for a lot of people, they're just not going to do it. Even if they like my Yeah, YouTube mostly, but sometimes I watch Twitch. So I prefer videos normally, but I follow a few streamers like Heavenly Controller and Afro who does content on Twitch. He said, much of your audience won't bother jumping on a different platform really. It's just human nature, the inconvenience of doing it. Yeah. I could probably see like maybe a third of my audience if I went there. 
which, you know, I do plan to test out like MMO streams, but I can't see everyone. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? You guys don't have to do that though. Like I'm, like I said, I'm gonna test out some MMO streams. Um, just because I don't think I'm curious to see. But even if I were to do to go to another platform, I'd rather go to Mixer over Twitch. So here's one thing I did do. So I'm already a YouTube partner. I reached out to. Mixer and Twitch to apply for their partnership program because I already have an established audience here. So there's a workaround, so I don't have to work my way up. But, you know, more than likely it's going to be a deny. Damn it. So as I'm working on the script for uh, the E's uh, timeline part two, I'm um, the only um, problem I'm going to have or problem I am having right now is Trying to build a backstory of the world. And I say that because very little of the games actually occur before this. I mean, before Adol's time. And there's this one. But it's mainly. You know, everything's already happened. And it's hard to find out, like, what happened prior to this game.
Damn it. Is it right? So get this some so get this. Somehow someone took H O triple three on Twitch, so I had to do H I O? Really? The guys that should just send at all a thousand years into the future. And his bar drains. His boost gauge really drains quickly. What? It's hard, like when you get a a username and someone takes it. Or even when you get a username you like and then it's just you can't do a whole lot because you know, people let their accounts sit idly. I don't blame you for being pissed. I would be too. I met another person with the name random person on the platform. Kind of funny. How did you, um, what made you come up with that name? can't in some games I wonder why that happens though You say I'm just another person on the internet as well. I dig it though.
So what do you guys think of Toll so far in comparison to Hugo and Unica? Here's how the story will end. You see, you like the combat style. Yeah, he literally slapped her with one hand and knocked her out. I'm curious what his motivations are. So I've kind of got an idea of, I feel like, the gameplay styles of the characters. He said he was basically saying she was not ready without really saying it. Yeah, he was. He's like, he just not. I feel like Like if we were to compare difficulty modes associated with characters, I would say Hugo is the easy mode of this game with Unica being normal and him being hard. He asked her, what did the five fingers say to the face? He did. trying to do the next episode I built in the first one I talked about <laughs> on the first episode of the legacy of ease I did talk about the world of ease I'm trying to figure out where do I go with the next episode? Like, do I... Like, do I cover... I'm trying to figure out, how long would you guys want the episodes to be? You want them to be short? Or would you like them longer? I could do the next episode, like Act Two for Legacy of Ease. I could do that with um, it covering mm -hmm. 
how ease rose. And then covering this game. And then I can go into uh, Ease Book 1. And I can incorporate the old 90s show. The videos are shorter, easier for people to pick up. Because the, the hardest part is just covering, um, the backstory and like if, if I, so in the next one, if I were to do the backstory, like finishing up the ascent and, you know, fall of ease and then lead it into this one and cover from there, it would be easy for me to, to go from there. Cause I, I can pick up and run the story. It's one of those things where I'm like, mm, do, what do I do specifically? I'm just trying to figure out like what's the best way to approach doing this. Um, I know some people have asked me like, whoa, where's the King of Fighters one? I'm like, that one's in hiatus. Caterpillar one. Oh, him.
I will not acknowledge that horrendous movie. I don't know of any King of Fighters movie. Dear God, this is idiots. Are you serious? Are you s
Thank God. I was like, if I die on this fucking boss, I am done skis. See, I say you make them as long as you feel comfortable with the term story. Story you're trying to tell. Just so why is King of Fighters in highest? Is it I will not acknowledge that crap of a movie. It's not King of Fighters. It's just some. The mm -mm. so of Japan and giant enemy crabs. I know, like that and tentacles. The crab monsters are the ultimate enemy of NECA, so uh, game companies make you fight crab monsters. Your Blu ray says bootleg. I think I'm king of fighters, but I'm not really. Missed the crab battle. Yes. This is no King of Fire's movie. It must be Lord of the Bands or something. Hey, it did not exist. We all know this. He said the latest three films by Disney said they are Star Wars films. That doesn't mean that they are. Ugh. I mean, we can go down the rabbit hole and talk about Star Wars. How do you all feel about that recent trilogy? And Kill got crabs for the Crab Queen. <laughs> hey, Paige, how's it going? Hey, Lynx Horse. said no F that I can't I'm going for hours <laughs> uh doing good I, you just missed a well mm, kind of a rant so what trilogy there's only the EU <laughs> I'm just trying to support that some films can claim to be something, but in real reality, they're not. What is with this? Um, what is with this thing with um, companies now wanting to crap a legacy of franchises? He said, Force Awakens. Okay. Last Jedi, try hard shit made by someone who didn't want to be there. Rise of Skywalker, huge ass messy clusterfuck that's bad, but at least fun. Kind of brand. He's a magic user, a bit of a baby face. Got those eyeballs like things floating around by his shoulders ringing any bells I have the faintest notion he sure is an annoying little shit
I like the sequel trilogy, but Ryan didn't stick to the plan and screw things up. Oh, she's talking about the Lord. She's talking. <laughs> Hugo is my spirit animal when it comes to his rants, uh, how he just shuts people down. I aim to be that good one day. He said there was no plan. That was a problem. The thing is, Rise of Skywalker did well considering what came before. Really, they need... They would need two more movies to make it right. He said Hugo equals the man who can never chill. I just received the, eight, the new 18 disc Blu ray box set on last Friday. Hmm. The opponent is like, I'm looking for a guy. I have those eyeball like things. Looks like he owns a bank. He's seen him. <laughs> gonna get them in 4k we could afford it so is it it doesn't run in 4k is it 1080 box it out I need to renew my Disney plus because I was binge watching the movies and then we just stopped watching <laughs> I don't even have so I don't have the only thing I have is a uh, crunchy roll and I think we have Hulu? but like we don't have anything else like Netflix and all that we we uh, when I quit my job, like we couldn't afford to have all that like we were before, but yeah. Oh, you guys just got it. Yeah, because you guys got it way later, right? Thank you. 
nothing entertaining on Disney Plus to me, but that's my taste. And Crunchyroll is horrible at anime stuff, which saddens me. Uh, how so? What do you mean? Uh, as far as Crunchyroll is concerned. And I think for Disney Plus with me, like once the nostalgia wore, wore off of the old cartoon shows, I kind of lost interest in it. I kind of felt the same way about Netflix when they got rid of like Ruin Kinch and a lot of anime that I enjoy. So I was like, eh. At first, I was kind of like thinking that um, it didn't make sense that you had to play the game three, two times to get the main character of Toll. But now I'm kind of understanding how like you should play it in the order of Unica, Hugo, and then Toll, just because of how it puts in perspective um, each character and the reasonings. I actually really like it. What do you think of it uh, so far, fangirl? He beating cheeks on one of these goddesses. Or at least he's going to. Or wants to. Interesting. Wow. So you're really considering buying E's Origins Collector's Edition on Vita? I want a physical copy of all the E's games. He said they didn't have their wings showing when Adol found them either. I think it would be interesting if one of them fell in love with Toll and then the same one fell in love with Adol. used to them not having wings. Ninety to a hundred? Good God.
wonder what the direction of the next ease game is going to be. For me, the country roll thing is multiple reasons why it's bad, and maybe some bias because of how they treat translations like Flamation does. Yo, I am all ears. I want to hear it. I've been told I need to check out, um, what's the other streaming service? Uh, VRX, but I don't know anything about it. Do, you, have, do any of you guys use it? Yeah, I've been kind of, um, I'm not sure if it's pronounced verb or if it's just VRV, but, uh, I've heard about it for a couple of years, but I've never, I don't know anyone who uses it. And so I am curious about it because it's like, you know, is there a better alternative to the Funimation site or to, um, the other one uh it's a vrv used to be shit it's also run owned by country roll it had funimation it, you say used to what happened what made it change Crunchyroll High Dive, which isn't as good. Unless something changed, I haven't looked at it in a long time. Oh, so basically they they cut ties? I can see someone pulling something like that. Well, you know, like aside from the sites that, um, you know, Spirit shared with me, like, I don't really know any other way to consume, you know, anime. And it's kind of frustrating too, like, 
because there's a lot of stuff I'd like to go back and rewatch. And I'm like, given how streaming media is these days, I'm like, I don't want to have to pay for all these platforms just to watch. So, like, I want to watch Rony Kenshin. But then if I watch it on Hulu, it's the uh, Sony dub. Instead of the Bang Zoom dub. He said, just watching an unboxing of the East Collector's Edition, basically you get a post on your nice book. Um, I know we pre-ordered the uh, Ease uh, Memories of Salsetta for, um, for PS4. We got the um, the Wayfar Wayfarers edition, which I'm very excited for. Because Memories of Stuff that is one of my uh, all time favorites. He said, VRV has other shit on too, but none of it really interested me outside of Last Man. He said, I really look forward to the next East game because from limited stuff I can find, it looks really interesting. Uh, you mean like nine or the, the one that they're working on now? Maybe he has Nick Tunes? Really? Oh, the one I'm working on now. I, from what I understand, that one's supposed to be a Redo a five. Which the only thing I want uh, Falcom, Neon Falcom to do is I want them to bring all the ease games to one platform. Uh, same thing I want them to do with the, uh, the trail series, like bring them onto one platform so that we can just sit and enjoy them, you know, all together versus them being so scattered Cause right now, as far as like trails, we have Trails in the Sky Trilogy, and then you got what? Um, and then it skipped. We don't even have an official translation of. Uh, we don't even have an official translation of um, Trails of Zero or Trails of Azure or Trails of Zero. Uh, have I heard of Night Trap on Vita? That's a remake. Um, 
Night Trap. That's that old game from like the Sega Genesis, isn't it? The Trails in the Sky I didn't enjoy as much as the Steel games. The only problem for me with Trails in the Sky, and maybe because every time I stream them, I do not, I, I get distracted by something else, but they, um, they're very slow. Like, I wish they weren't so slow. Oh, it's a Sega CD one. It is a Sega CD game. Let's see, the first games in the RX2 tend to start slow, but once they pick up, they pick up. Do, do you, Zero, do you know the name of the new one that they're working on? The new Trails title? Distracted, you talking about the curse? Yes, the curse indeed. Oh, you put it in Discord a while ago. I need to go back and check it. Oh, you mean the one that's cafe? Yeah. Zero, you also get the Sarah CD box. Let's take a CD box. Ooh. Okay, almost 4 a.m. Time to go unconscious for a few hours. All right, man. Thank you for coming through. And anytime you want, if you want to join the Discord, man, we'd love to have you. I'm probably going to go for another... We miss an hour. Kind of depends on you guys. gives a different perspective on you go.
He said, hey, it's a live action game. I want it. Get it then. I need to get, um, does anyone play the new, uh, the Panzer Dragoon remake? So we may need another reunion chat soon. It seems to bless all new members and give them their black rose. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That rant to get out of me. Like I. I feel like I was firing on all cylinders and I'm over here like, oh God, I'm spent. Um, the Panzer Dagoon remake. So he's going to burn the flesh from the bones. He's serious. So it's more like a bell of attrition when you're dealing with uh, Toll's gameplay. I can see it's getting really hard to the point where I may need to grind. Ajimari no Kiseki. I wonder what that means. Thank you. 
A Jimari no Kiseki story is set in the Zamoria continent after the great twilight being set after the events of Trails of Cold Steel 4. Because Cold Steel 3 and Cold Steel 4 feel like um, Infinity War and Endgame. Or night trap. Well, you said you like live action. So I'd probably say go with night trap. But I think replayability would be ease origin. Over fifty playable characters and three protagonists, one being Lloyd. I love the old 80s horror. I think I'll get more out of that. Plus, I could always get ease on normal edition. Yeah, and if you get it digitally, you get it. Um, or you can get it on both platforms. I think a link to the Japanese site if you really want to go sign it. Okay, definitely. Appreciate that. Comes out after your birthday. Are you gonna import it and do like play and translate, or are you going to wait for the official release? So you're, gonna, so you're gonna wait on this ass something you can't pass up? I feel you. think so far of uh, this since I'm playing as Cole. I like that his story is adding additional like depth 
to Kova, uh, Unica, and uh, and to Hugo. I do like his playstyle. I just wish I didn't have that feeling. Like I got this feeling that I'm really gonna have to grind. Him. Like, I feel like I gotta go out of my way and kill as many enemies as I possibly can just to level up because I feel like I can manage enemies, but at the same time, it's one of those like feelings like, am I strong enough? I'm curious, this is something I did when I asked you guys, what do you guys think of, um, would you want to see me stream Fantasy Star Online 2 or Final Fantasy 14 on YouTube or Twitch? He said, do you feel you're under, le under level right now or just need to do in-game grind? I think both. Because Unica was harder to play as but I never got that feeling like I was just oh well, yeah towards the end game I did because I avoided a lot of battles um but there was a point where I just didn't feel like I was severely under level but with Hugo I just felt like I was ready no matter what him normal enemies I'm like yeah I can take him but bosses is kind of a whole nother beast. He said, um, sounds like Falcon wanted to pour all the shell games versions over to PS4. Who knows if we ever get those. So if it's an MMO, you should keep it a Twitch. Yeah, it's like those are two MMOs like I would love to play. I'm wondering should I play those for stream or just play them for fun? Because the little bit I've got to try of Fantasy Star Online 2, I enjoyed it thoroughly.
But I do think that um, Twitch is the better platform when it comes to like MMOs and stuff like that. Oh, you just bought it? Hey. You're gonna enjoy it. He one shots them with that. Interesting. Well, I guess between the two uh, MMOs, which would you guys want to see me stream? Or where to stream either? I also have um, Black Desert as well. It works out at $87. That's not bad. Francis Star Online too, but I don't have an Xbox and I don't want to get one just for that, so wait, so it is under an exclusive embargo? In Japan it's on the switch I just don't understand why of all titles why would you release that in the West on a platform that's not even as popular you know the only thing I can think of with Microsoft is like yeah we need something exclusive and I'm like I don't understand Microsoft trying to cater to a uh, RPG demographic.
It's coming out on PC next month, I believe. Yeah, it should be coming on PS4 as well. I'm just not sure when. Yo, what's up, Tooth? You see, I keep seeing ads on YouTube for it too, and it makes me a little salty. I can't play it. I think it's probably kind of like how Final Fantasy VII Remake is timed exclusive. Like, it makes sense for, like, Square to do that with Final Fantasy VII Remake, but, like, Microsoft with Fantasy Star Online, the only thing Microsoft has is the benefit of having better online infrastructure. have been behind in the first half of the stream. Oh, were you there for the rant? This is the. Where is, it? is this? If this is that centipede boss, I'm gonna. Oh my God! It is. I hate this boss.
<laughs> I hate this boss. No, they, the only thing that these do is like damage me. Like they don't do anything to the centipede. knock out the last two spikes and then hit his head. All I've got to do is hit his damn head. God. Thank you. I was sweating. 
Good God, dude. I hate that boss. Uh, Zero, remind me, was it Rhea or Fina that fell in love with Adol? I think it was Fina. I think you're right. Oh, it is Fina. I like Toll's character. Have I played this on Vita? Just wondering what's the gameplay like compared to console. Oh, uh, it's the same. It runs and plays the exact same um, on Vita. Because, like, if you buy it digitally, you get uh, it on both platforms. And, yeah, it, it runs smooth. Like, there's, there's no difference in performance-wise.
Yeah, was it 2006? It was PC exclusive. I'm definitely gonna get this. You should be on commission because normally I wouldn't go for a game like this. Nah. I just set out to play and complete the, the series. The story is what keeps me going though. The gameplay too. Oh, so one thing I did do, um, and I know I said before, like, I don't really get much, like if people buy things off of Amazon, but I do have Amazon links now for UK, Japan, and whatnot. UK, France, the Dutch, Japan. So I know I have a lot of international viewers, so it's like, and uh, for a long time I was always asked, like, oh, do you have Amazon links? So I'm like, no, I don't. But I do now. Since I've been here, you've opened my eyes to games I wouldn't normally play, and that's fantastic. Hey, my game, my my aim is really to just get people to. To get people to uh, just try out new games. Um, there's a lot of series I've played and enjoyed from my youth and followed, or ones I'm curious about, and I just, I play it through. You know, of course I do play some trending games, like, you know, Final Fantasy, stuff like that, but. Um, yeah, typically I just play games I'm interested in. And like Zero said, like if you enjoyed this, then, um, he's, uh, three, uh, Oath and Pogano, and, um, uh, Arcan is it Arcan Officium, they're both, um, they both play like this. The Steam version is based off of the PC PSP version, right? Not the PSP version.
Oh, you never play. Oh, okay. Yeah, like even if you beat this uh, page with, um, so every time you, you beat it, you unlock someone new. Like you beat it with, um, actually no, you start off, you've got Hugo and um, Unica. You beat it with both Hugo and Unica, then you unlock uh, him. So you beat it with him, then you unlock Adol for like a fourth playthrough. So there's always something more. I've only played on PSP, but it looks the same. It seems, it seems the same. I just need to get my hands on a Vita. Like, I really want a Vita, and I have no idea where to get it. likes on this stream i dig it if we can get to 20 i'll be happy yeah i think vita you can get what one you can get one one and two origins and And, um, you can even get locker mills of Donna too. I've not seen Aeon Flux, no. I remember being curious about it when I was younger. Um, Sue says, I've actually got most of the East games on Steam, but haven't got to playing them. I did try out Origin 1 and 2, but it took me a while to figure out those games. Uh, I've got Origins 1 and 2, uh, 3 and 4, 6, 7, and 8 all on Steam. I remember Phantom 2040. <laughs> Thank you. 
What did you think of Lacrimosa of Donna? I love that game. Zero to six was his. How do you feel about the bump mechanics? I actually like the bump mechanics. I feel like it adds a layer of strategy. I got 10 seal copies on PSP. They're two discs, all 10 digitally remastered episodes, and it's region free. When I find them all, find them, I'll send you one. I know here they're getting hard to get a hold of. Paige, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Because I, I know that's going to cost a lot to ship anything. So I don't want you doing that. You see, I kind of like the simplicity of it, and yet it was still hard to a certain extent. Fighting Dark Fact was really hard, especially with the disappearing tile floors. He said, Lacrimosa Adana was great, but the ending he has put in the fields. I still listen to the ending every now and then. You know the thing about Lacrimosa Adana is, I feel like it was a criminally underrated game, especially when it came to the Switch. You had a lot of people that just compared it to uh, Legend of Zelda and just wrote it off and I'm like man this this game is good this game is really good the story is really compelling that a lot of people I think that's the difficulty of trying to cater to the Nintendo crowd or Nintendo only crowd that are just used to Mario Zelda and the like it's hard to introduce them to anything else the bump mechanic was a bit confusing at first the hardest thing for me is to figure out how to save using Oh yeah. Yeah, the the ones on the Steam Falcon games are not I'm playing Trails in the Sky. That is such a keyboard and mouse game. It is not really optimized for uh, for controller. It says no on the no on the UK eBay. I love some cheap and really good market value. Ooh. 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 Why do they map the save menus or clicking the right? <laughs> it is so busted how they have it set up. I absolutely hate it on trying to play with controller, but like I don't have a way to play it on the monitor here in front of me versus this one and have it be streamable. That's just that's one of the struggles of it.
do that. I don't want you putting yourself. I, I don't want you going out of your way to have me do that. Zero, you say you're on the final show. Oh, of uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. Age. Only if you want to. I don't want you going out of your way to do that. Only if you want to. I'll gladly accept it. Only if that's something you want to do. I don't want you going out of your way to do that. He said, let me break save you. Also, he just made her repeat it. I don't know. I'm just saying. You don't have to. Well, for the story, he's the last one. Once I beat the game with Told, and that's because his is the main campaign.
I'm getting wrecked over here. Jeez. Okay. All right. it up again.
I like that I'm fighting different bosses in a way than I did with the first two playthroughs. So I think what I'm going to do, um, oh yeah. So each character you play through is very different. So Unica's, um, Unica's playthrough is different than Hugo's, which is also very different than, um, Tolls. And each character, uh, you get a background into them and even though Tolls campaign is the the canon way i like playing it last now that i played everyone else's because it brings everything to full circle So right now she's hinting at the Ark and the Fish Gym, which I think is the title of the Hula Bee. Is it? All right, uh, good night, HLO. I'm actually, as soon as this cutscene ends, I'm going to save and then I'm going to wrap up the stream.
Yep. Silver harmonica. Right? Because Joshua uses the same, the harmonica looks the same that Joshua has. Interesting, he sees right through him. Right? They really are. Unica, okay, I'm going to say this. I don't know how you feel about it, Zero, but I feel like Unica was boring. Her story just, ugh. I'm very invested in the Darklings and the Fact family. Yeah, Hugo was just... So that being said, guys, we're going to wrap up the stream here. Um, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I really like, I wish I did more gameplay than I did my ranting. I think the first 50 minutes of the stream was ranting, but uh, I got a lot off my chest. I said a lot. I was a little tipsy. I've uh, sobered up a little bit and um, I had a lot of fun with this. Um, definitely looking forward to picking it back up again next Monday. Uh, for Falcon Monday, we're going to do 
both this and uh, Trails in the Sky, so I'm going to pick up both next Monday. And then uh, come Wednesday, Devil May Cry 2. We'll finish that up. And um, Prowls of Mana. And then Friday, we'll do uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. And uh, if you guys would like, You guys would like um, Wednesday. It's a little something different. Wednesday. How did you guys feel about Dragon Mark for Death community stream for the first stream on Wednesday, and then Devil May Cry at night, and then Friday, uh, Final Fantasy VII remake and. Uh, trials of mana so that yeah i put it in discord we can talk about uh the game is coming on but yeah uh thank you guys for coming through hope y'all had a great one i had a blast uh i see uh, you have a great night uh or day rather page double hunter nero i see you zero fanatic hlo um uh two thou Rogue was in here earlier. So is Spirit and everyone else. And I hope you all have a great one. And uh, stay safe. You guys enjoy the stream. You enjoy the content we put out. Uh, hit the like button. Share it. we got Patreon channel memberships. Um, donations, super chats. Everything you guys invest into me. Your time, financial, whatever. Everything goes back into this channel. So, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. I really, greatly appreciate you. So... With that being said, catch y'all in the next one. Deuce as well. Too sweet. Be daily. And um, see y'all in the next one.